earlier, Eric seems to to truly be an expert at um, creating uh, just portions of the model and then mirroring those portions. But, you know, we also see Crispy Co. over on the right screen using SolidWorks. He's also on that pattern, opting to do it as a sketch pattern. I like it. And, uh, oh, rolling the dice here a little bit, I think, with uh, with a potential Ivan exploit. So I think let's we're gonna go answer, back probably. to our runners here and learn a little bit about our runners. Uh, Airwick started out in SolidWorks 99 and used most versions up to SolidWorks 2021. Okay, that's good to know. So he started out as a SolidWorks user, but now he's competing using Onshape. That's kind of cool. He's made the transition. And Crispy Co. is a self-taught CSWE, uh, and, or sorry, self-taught SolidWorks and got his CSWE in 2013. And there's actually some bad, bad blood between these guys. There's kind of like a family rivalry here because last week, Crispy Co. defeated Airwick's cousin, Chadwick, in the Elite Eight. So, kind of some bad blood there. All right, guys, here we go. This Cad vs. Cad battle. Our first showdown between Airwick and Crispy Co. Canada vs. Australia. On Chain vs. SolidWorks. Begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance on this one is plus or minus. Two grams. Kind of a tight tolerance on this one. Both of our, our runners are grabbing a screenshot and jumping into their CAD system. <coughs> oh, my mouth like just ran out of the ability to speak. <laughs> just said, no, you can't speak anymore. This is a cool part. It's perforated tray. There's a lot of stuff going on in this part. You have to figure out how to, you know, create that kind of rim going around the outside. Crispy Co on the right looks like he's going to do it with solids. I like it. Crispy Co is an expert in multi-body design, so be on the lookout for him to do some multi-body moves. <clears throat> Airwick on the left using on shape looks like he's going to start out by kind of sketching sketching what that upper section looks like with that that rim section looks like. This 2D print, for those of you that are, that are watching from home, this 2D print um, shows that section over here in section, in this section view. So you can see that the section view says, this detail view represents the entire outer rim. So that's going to be kind of the, the first tricky part of this model. You know, like we talked about earlier, you want to take a model, you want to kind of discretize it. You want to break it up into different features. Well, that would definitely be something I would try to address pretty soon. And it looks like both of our runners are trying to come up with a game plan for that shape. And uh, and then, you know, once you've got that in place, then the next tricky part of this thing is going to be these rails running along the bottom. You can see here in the 2D print, there's a little note on here. It says, note. Geometry in these areas are nice, clean faces. So you're gonna have to, you have to do that or get at least pretty close to that to get within tolerance. And then of course, the whole pattern itself at the end. So kind of a fun part. We've seen this part in tournaments before or variation of this part in tournaments before. Glad to see it making a comeback here. It's got a lot of cool, cool little challenges that our runners are gonna, that our runners are gonna, you know, hopefully not struggle too much with, but are gonna have to navigate through. And for those of you who are just tuning in, I am just a little bit getting hit with this cold that's going around. A little congested, a little bit of a drier, drier mouth than I normally have. So if you see me in here slamming orange juice and water and stuff like that, if you hear my voice giving out a little bit, that's why. Uh, very excited to be here. Very excited to be hosting the tournament today. Just uh, bad timing to get hit with a cold. But we persevere. Ivan in the chat says, nice, nice, familiar part. Yeah, I think it was actually Ivan and Allness, uh, who is Imant's older brother, uh, who competed the first time we debuted this part in the tournament a couple of years ago. 2022 World Championship, where Allness won using Onshape. And then, of course, last year, 
the 2023 World Championship, we had none other than Victor K taking down the championship. Here we go, getting back to the action. Crispy Co. Looks like he's got a pretty good representation of that tray. Using SolidWorks in dark mode. Like seeing this dark mode interface. And Airwick on the left. Already moving on to those lower rails. Trying to decide the best way to use those lower rails. I gotta say, my experience watching Airwick, he's, he's really good at understanding how to model things with symmetry kind of planning out how to create just you know limited portions of the model Ivan saying I think you're right I believe I lost this part on a dimension typo my fingers did not enter what my eyes saw about that luck yep luck is always going to factor in here Remember, we had that happen last year, even in the tournament with uh, Ivan. I think I think he typed a zero instead of a comma or something like that, like from the ten key, getting, or instead of a period, decimal. That can uh, that can happen too. Luck can really play a factor in these in these champions. Amont, yep, recognizing something that just showed up. <laughs> Ivan saying, "Yep, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, you brought it up, bro." <laughs> You just reminded me of it. Look at Airwick going in and using delete face here. I like this. Or re actually, I think it's a replace face. Yeah, look at that. To kind of pull that extra face out and give him a nice clean result. That is very nice use of some of that direct editing capability we have. We have a tool similar to that in SolidWorks. We have a replace face. It works a little different though. I gotta say, I do like the way it works more in on shape because you don't have to you don't have to create the boundary surface first. You can just work right off of an existing face. Um, and I don't, I don't think you can do that in SolidWorks. I think you have to do like an offset surface at zero and extend it um, to get that same same behavior. So very cool. Uh, Airwick is really making some nice progress on this thing. I mean, we talked earlier about how you've got the um, you got to you know take a strategy of kind of discretizing the model. We talked about creating the rim for the main tray, then creating those rails across the bottom, then creating the holes. I mean, look, Airwick's already on phase three of that process, so really, really doing a nice job. And like I said earlier, Airwick seems to to truly be an expert at um, creating uh, just portions of the model and then mirroring those portions. But, you know, we also see Crispy Co. over on the right screen using SolidWorks. He's also on that pattern, opting to do it as a sketch pattern. I like it. And, uh, oh, rolling the dice here a little bit, I think, with, uh, with a potential Ivan exploit. And I think we're going to see an answer coming in here. So our first answer comes in from Crispy Co. Two, eight, three, one. And that is correct. Wow. Guys, what a nice match. Man, they were both right there. It looked like Eric just got caught up a little bit with the positioning of that hole. And I looked back over and Crispy Co was just right there. Wow, wow, wow. Very nice. Well played, GG, and fast, fast, fast. You guys are awesome. That was really, really good. Looks like we're going to see a little victory dance here. I'll leave it on the screen here for Crispy Co to celebrate his victory lap and it looks like Airwick was right behind him getting ready to come in with a, a similar answer that answer again was 2831 2831 was the correct answer well done crispy cow